Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video with us here at LMDN STEM Academy. In this video, we will be working through the Cape Chemistry Unit 2 Paper 2 past paper from June 2016. We will be doing question 1b, which reads as follows. A 60 cm cube of oxygen were mixed with 10 cm cube of a gaseous hydrocarbon X, right? And as usual, we can denote that gaseous hydrocarbon X as CXHY, where X and Y are the unknown number of atoms present in, in, in of each element, right? So after exploding and cooling to room temperature, 40 cm cube of gas were left. On shaking with aqueous sodium hydroxide, 10 cm cube of oxygen remained. All measurements were made at the same temperature and pressure. The combustion of X can be represented by the following equation, CXHY plus parentheses X plus Y over four oxygens is going to form X moles of carbon dioxide plus Y over two moles of steam okay so what we have to do first of all is put all of this information into a form that you know a simpler form that will then enable us to calculate our formula of the hydrocarbon x so here's how we're going to approach it the first step that we're going to take is that we're going to just write out underneath this equation that they gave us. In fact, let's rewrite it so we have it down here. So let's just rewrite this equation for the combustion of X. So it was C X H Y plus X plus Y over four O two that forms X moles of carbon dioxide and steam, Y over two moles of steam. Okay? All right. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna write the corresponding value, volumes of each reagent and products underneath each other, right? So they told us that 60 cm cube of oxygen were mixed. So we're gonna put 60 underneath oxygen, like that's how much we would have had starting out. So we're gonna put 60, in fact, let me. So we're gonna put the 60 under here. That's what we're starting out with for oxygen. We're mixing that with 10 cm cube of the hydrocarbon. So we're going to put the 10 cm cube under our hydrocarbon, CXHY. And then they said that after they cool, they did the explosion, right? So we did an explosion of our hydrocarbon with the oxygen. We're going to get presumably a gas mixture, right? And that gas mixture, so let's just jot down some more information over here that the right here that the gas mixture formed upon the explosion had a volume of um there was a volume so let's just assume that that volume was say z they didn't tell us what the entire volume was that was formed, but after we cooled down to room temperature, right? So imagine that we're condensing off some of the steam that we made. That's what we're doing, right? If we cool down the gas mixture Z to room temperature, then they're saying that that Z then becomes 40 cm cube upon, so this is after condensing, that's what we're going, that we're going to get 40, right? So after we condense or we cool down. So after we cool down, we have 40 cm cube, okay? So remember now, going from here to here, what, what happened? What changed? So after the explosion, presumably we have a gas mixture that has every gas in it. It has the carbon dioxide, it has steam. And the, the big hint here is that there's some leftover oxygen as well, okay? 
not all of the oxygen reacted. So the gas mixture form had a volume of Z, and we can say that in Z, we had CO2, we had the steam, and we had unreacted oxygen. So that's very important to point out at this point that we had some unreacted oxygen in there as well. Okay, so when we cool down, right? So we cool down. When we're cooling down and condensing, essentially what we're doing is we're taking out the steam out of it. Okay, so we're taking out the steam. So if we take out the steam, by condensation, we're gonna be left with in that in this 40 cm cube that they told us was left after the cool down. In that 40 cm cube, that consists of then carbon dioxide and any unreacted oxygen. Okay. And so now what do they say after that? They say on shaking with aqueous sodium hydroxide. So we're gonna take this mixture now, right? This 40 cm cube mixture that contains carbon dioxide and unreacted oxygen. We're gonna shake that with NaOH, right? So that's our next thing that we're gonna do. We're gonna take this and we're gonna shake it with NaOH. So we're gonna add NaOH to that mixture, right? This, this mixture here. And when we do that, what's gonna happen? the there's going to be 10 cm cube of oxygen that remained right so after we cool down and then we add the NaOH the final volume is going to be um 10 cm cube so let me just write that 10 cm cube here and that's of going to be comprised of unreacted oxygen okay so effectively what we've done in adding NaOH is that we've taken out the carbon dioxide and that particular reaction is this, right? Where we have NaOH reacting with carbon dioxide to form sodium carbonate and water. So that's literally what we did in that third step. And water. Right, so essentially what we're doing is we're taking out the NaOH. So we've taken out any, we're taking out CO2 rather. So we're taking it out. This transition here, when we add NaOH, we're taking out CO2, okay? And so if, if it, in this transition, when we add NaOH, we went from a volume of 40 cm cube to 10 cm cube, it means that the amount of carbon dioxide then that was present and was as a result taken out must have been 30 cm cube. So we get that we had 30 cm cube of carbon dioxide that was formed as a result of the combustion. So if we go back up here, right, so we were filling out our volumes, we can put a 30 underneath the CO2, okay? And then now, finally, because we started with 60 cm cube of oxygen, and in the end, we had 10 cm cube of unreacted oxygen left over, then it follows that if we started with 60, right, and in the end we had 10, then it means that 50 cm cube of oxygen was what actually reacted, okay? So that's how much oxygen reacted, right? And so we're gonna just take out this 60 and put the actual amount that reacted, which was 50, okay? So this is a very key part of the question in, able to, you know, in order to be able to come up with the formula at all, right? We have to be able to go from these words and from these qualitative information that they're giving us with the addition of the sodium hydroxide. We have to be able to use all of that to come up with our reacting volumes and our product volumes. And in that way, we can find the formula of the hydrocarbon, okay? So we're just gonna erase this information down here and then now proceed with finding our um, formula of compound X. So we're just gonna take all of this off for now. Okay. And then we're gonna work from here, okay? 
So what we see now here is a classic molecular formula determination when we're given volumes, right? And so because we have this um, information here in parentheses that all measurements were made at the same temperature and pressure, then we know immediately that we can apply Avogadro's law, that Avogadro's law holds. So we can apply Avogadro's law since all measurements were made at the same temperature and same pressure. Right, this is a very key assumption to be able to go any further here. And so what we have now is that we have 10 to 50 to 30. And so we, we can convert these volumes to ratios. So we're just gonna divide everything through by the smallest volume and just make that our, our one volume basis. So that will be our one volume, which is just one mole, right, essentially. And then we can divide this one by 10 cm cube. So that's five volumes. So that would be five moles, right? And then the 30, we're going to divide that by the or one volume equivalent, which is 10. And so that will be three moles here, right? And so at this point, we see, remember, that whenever we get our moles or we get our ratios, effectively what we've gotten are the stoichiometric coefficients. So there would be a one here. Right, and the five would be in here, right? X plus Y over four is gonna be five, and then the three moles would be the X, right? So immediately now, we see how everything is gonna to come together. So when we look at, let's look at this one, because this is the simplest one. What we get from that is that X is equal to three. Now, if we look here, we see that X, plus y over four is gonna be equal to five, right? And we already know x, we just found x to be three. So if we plug in three here for x, we'd have three plus y over four being equal to five. And in the end, what it turns out then is that if we bring over the five, we're gonna end up with two on the right-hand side. And when we bring over the four, we cross multiply by the four, that will give us that y is just simply eight. And that's really all that we need to do, right? We have x now and we have y, so we can figure out what they should be, right? So x is now three, we know that. We now know that it's three and we know that y is eight. And so our formula for the hydrocarbon then will be C three, H8, right? That's what X is. C3, H8, okay? And so if we put it all together now to see all the stoichiometric coefficients, what we will have is that we have C3, H8 plus five, O2 would give three CO2, plus, what is this, y over two, so that's eight over two, four moles of water, okay? And so let's just double check that that's balanced. We have three carbons here, we have three carbons here. We have eight hydrogens here, we have eight hydrogens here. We have 10 oxygens here, and then we have three times two, six plus four, 10 oxygens here, and so we're perfectly balanced. And so we are justified then, right? We are confident that the formula of the hydrocarbon X is actually this here, C3H8. So this is our answer. And with that, we have completed this question.